Thanks. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Michael So. Uh, Jimmy, can you stand up, Jimmy? Jimmy is my classmate uh, from same school, St. Paul, uh, class of 80. Uh, we, we study together in primary and secondary. Um, my, I, I'm not a pastor. Um, I am from a church DSS, uh, Church di Sana Sini. I don't recommend you to do that. <laughs> I go to any church that invites me uh, to share. Uh, and uh, what I'm going to share, I hope you will open up your eyes. Uh, and every word that I speak comes from the Holy Spirit, not from me. If it's anything that's not, let it be burned and thrown out. Don't digest anything that's not. So everything shared must have a Bible verse, grounded in the Bible verse. Okay, I'm going to start off just as an introduction. Uh, I don't see any kids in this church. Uh. Well, one young only, this one. Oh, the upstairs. Oh, okay, good. Uh, it sounds very basic, like kindergarten. Orange comes from an orange tree. Right? Very basic. Apple comes from an apple tree. Very basic. Durian, our favorite fruit, comes from a durian tree. But the conclusion, the, the, what I'm trying to drive is, when you see a fruit, there's a tree. There must be a tree. There's no fruit without a tree. Pricky pears. Have you seen the tree, uh, picky press comes from? I have not seen. Anyone, anyone seen it? So I choose the right one. You have not seen the tree, picky press. It's a Moroccan uh, cactus in uh, North, North Africa. But we know that there's such thing as picky press from Google, from books, from biology books. And biology books are many, written by many authors, many schools, many countries. And we can cross-reference one, one particular book, let's say Malaysia textbook or Google or Wikipedia, to another book. So there's a lot of cross-referencing. It's the same with our Bible. Our Bible is 66 books, written over 1,500 years, 40 authors, three continents. Most of them don't know each other. But when they write, they have a consistent message. Every Bible verse, 32,000, roughly 32,000, 31,102 Bible verses. But they are cross-referenced at least twice. Each Bible verse is cross-referenced twice. Different time zone, different continent, different author. Most of them have not met each other before. But it co brings a consistent message. Same thing with Pricky Pians. You can find it. You can find a lot of authors. You can cross-reference you can be assured it's the truth. Same with the book. Our 66 books called the Bible. So, the, as an introduction, if there's a fruit, there's a tree. If you look at Matthew 26, 26 to Matthew 26, 29, I will just read it as fast as possible because I've got 60 word slides. I've got one minute for slides. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. Bread become body. Matthew 26, 27, and he took the cup, wine, and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink you all of it, for this is my blood. The wine become blood. So the first interchange, bread to body, wine to cup. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Have you seen the second changing? Bread body, bread body. The bread become body, wine become blood, and Matthew 26, 29 call body, blood, fruit of the wine the second changing intentionally done so to hide the message no it's always there the bible words is always there we read it over and over again we may not have noticed it maybe there's a will that's blocking us from seeing the truth but now you know if there's a fruit there's a tree In John 15, 1, I'm the true wine, and my father is the husband made. Galatians 3, 13. Galatians 3, 13. Christ had redeemed us 
from the curse of the law be made a curse of, for us, for his reason, curse is everyone that hang on the tree. Jesus died at the cross. He called himself the tree. Galatians 3, 1, 13. You saw the fruit of the wine. The fruit of the wine is the Holy Communion. And there's a tree. We are taught in Kedal Garden, there's a fruit, there's a tree. Then if you try to break down, what's the nature of the tree? In John 3, 16, very popular. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. Should not perish, vegetable perish, body perish. Should not perish, that means your body should not perish. If you take the fruit, but you have to sustain, you have to take it. You don't take, you perish. It's a sustainable nourishment. John 6, 48, I'm the bread of life. Galatians 3, 22 say, this is a tree of life. You take, you will never die. Tree of life, you take, you will never die. This is a holy communion. I'm the fruit. I come to give life. I have victory over life. I shall live and not die. You know, the, the choir has sang, very beautifully, I shall live and not die. If you die, that means you did not live. It's mutually exclusive. You live, you live. You die, you die. Whether you succumb to that or not. Hopefully with this revelation, you can see. John 6.50, this is the bread which come down from the heaven. And this man, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Jesus is saying it. Not, not Brother Michael, Dr. Kwan. Or, it, it, Jesus actually saying it. John 6.58, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your father did. Eat manna and are dead. He that eat of this bread shall live forever. He's selling a new bread. Roti, roti, roti baru. He's not misleading you. If he's mislead you, then he's not a perfect sacrifice at the cross. He's telling the truth. This bread is from heaven. This bread is better than your father. Moses, when they went into the wilderness, they were eating Mana from heaven also. But that, you, you, they are all dead. So Jesus is using plain language to explain. When we look at, look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. He's coming back. No doubt about it. He's coming back. But he asked you to break the bread until he comes. He didn't say break the bread until you drop dead. No. He's asking you to break the bread daily. Break the bread until he comes. There is a lot of collaborative words, uh, collaborative evidence that point to the tree of life. He is the tree. He called the Holy Communion hidden in two conversion to call it fruit. Before that, he called it bread and cup. Then after that, he changed it to body and blood. So it's intentionally. Why is this intentionally done? Done so. Why is it? You match the description of Jesus telling you, describing himself as a tree of life, with Genesis 3.22. And the Lord God, behold, the man has become one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat, he will live forever. Tree of life was taken away from Adam and Eve. They were chased out, shoo shoo away, put the cherubim and the angel swirling salt to keep them away from eating it. If they eat, they will live forever. But now Jesus came down as a tree of life to give you back so that you can eat from the tree of life. If you can realize this revelation now, only now you can see it. I read it many times, I didn't see it. Only recently, you know, like five years ago only, I started to see it. I see very excited. Told a lot of people. Most of them think I'm cuckoo. But it's the Bible. It's not what I share. It's what is written in the Bible. And if you all can see, 1 Corinthians 15, 25 says that he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Under his feet. The last enemy 
that shall be destroyed is dead. Why is it important that it must go under his feet and the last enemy must be defeated? There's no death in heaven. Death is only in earth. He has to come down to earth to deal with death. Just imagine uh, my house, I got three story. My, my, my basin leaking, level three. I call the plumber. The plumber rush, rush, come. He tend to my basin in level four, uh, level one. Doesn't make sense, eh? My leaking basin is level three. So he has to go to level three. Same. Jesus cannot deal with death in heaven. He has to come down to earth to deal with death. And death is caused by not being able to eat the tree of life. Now he brought back the tree of life. Corinthians 11, 15, 25. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God uh, to, the, to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority. And the last enemy to destroy is death. It's only when he can destroy that he can bring rapture to occur, to give it to the Father. So can you see the importance of Holy Communion now? So far, how many of you are still following me? Raise up your hand. <laughs> A lot still not <laughs> lost. That is just my introduction. That's not my sermon. Today's message is unlocking the last mystery. That is just the kindergarten, just basic. Only. When you see fruit, there must be a tree. When God described the tree of life as, as the one that gives life, I come to give life, life abundantly. Life is mutually exclusive from that. It is, you have life, you cannot die. It, it's everlasting. You will not perish. And it's very simple. The Holy Communion is the fruit. But why is this message kept so far? Why is it so hard to be seen? And why is it coming up now? I, I think it can be found in Revelation 10, 17. It explained very clearly. 10, 17 says, But in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servant and prophet. Okay, the seventh angel is about to sound, not sound yet, about to sound. Because when it sound, 11.15 explain, and the seven angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever. That's rapture where he bring his kingdom in this world to meet with the kingdom in heaven. That's where the last enemy is destroyed. That's where the last enemy is under his feet. His feet. We will check again. His feet, your feet, my feet, his feet, our feet, and his feet is one body, one church. So this, this message is that it will not be revealed even though if Jesus stand in front and told the people, people won't believe. I went through a lot of criticism uh, uh, People criticize me, stole me, or kick me out from forum. I, I've gone through that. But the timing wasn't right. And why, why is it now? Why is it now is the perfect timing? Before that, in Deuteronomy 30, sorry. Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that. I have set before you a life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Choose life, not death. When John 6.50, John 6.50, John 6.50, this is the bread which come down from heaven that man may eat thereof and not die. This is Jesus sharing it. Jesus sharing it. Okay? In, in Revelation 10, 10, 17, 10, 7, it says that this message really shared to the prophet and the servant of God. In Habakkuk, Habakkuk, the, sorry, Habakkuk, sorry, in Acts 13, 41 and Habakkuk 1, 12, 
you will not believe even if one tells it to you, we shall not die. Jesus told to his disciple, the disciple that saw him perform so many miracles, disciple that saw him, he did a lot of healing, disciple that saw him walk away from being stoned, so many, and they are called disciple. Yet, yet, in John 6, 6, 6, triple 6, from that time, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Even Jesus in front of them telling them the truth, the disciples just turned around and walked away. Why? As Habakkuk has shared, the time is not right. You need to be nearer before the seven angel blow, about to be blown, not blown yet. That was his disciples. Now he is sharing it to Pharisees, learned scholars. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. If you don't die, you never see death. If you die, you saw death. John 8, 52. Then he said the Jews, on, they, then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou has a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophet, thou say, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste that. Abraham died, physically died. The Pharisees are scolding Jesus. Abraham physically died. Who are you? Jesus in front of them. Not anyone, not Ali Akau. Jesus telling them you will not die. But the time is not right. Habakkuk has already said, Act 13, 41 is there. Even if the one in front of you tell you, you will not believe. But in Isaiah 25, 7, and he will destroy in this mountain the face covering cast over all people in the will that spread all over nation. Isaiah 25, 8, he will swallow up death in victory. He will swallow up death in victory. Death is in the earth only, not, not in heaven. So he has to swallow up here. And how does he do that? He destroy the face covering. Not only covering your face, but covering the whole nation. When did this happen? You see people with masks, worldwide. No mask, no entry, no mask, cannot go out, cannot go to hospital. Not only Malaysia, the whole worldwide. COVID. For the first time, you see the mask covering the whole nation. So the time is up. The time is coming. There is no new, there is no new Bible verse. There is no new doctrine. It's all in the Bible. You know, when you see the angel, if I can go back, four times it says the book. This book is open. John saw. The book is open. It's never closed. Not sealed like Daniel. Seal it up. Don't write. This is a small book open. I believe it is the gospel. There's 300 Bible verses that talk about immortality, that you can live forever. You have to search for it. It's open. There's no new doctrine. And it's late. Eh? It's late. Twice he mentioned. Uh, this one, right. Right is always blessed. Lah. Right. You have a right. Left is okay, not so blessed, but right is more blessed. Right is on the sea. Left is on the land. But both got fire. Both got fire. Have you all, have you all died already or not? Water baptism is not symbolic. There is a purpose for water baptism. We are all appointed to die once. If you are not die in your water baptism, better rush, make appointment with Pastor Dr. Kwan. Have your, your water baptism. Have your death. You are appointed to die once. Make that appointment die, die once. It's a happy funeral. People will come and witness and celebrate. So, on the right is on water. Those who are baptized by water. On the left, those who died. And it's pointing up. It's time to go up, really. No more rushing. Time is coming, really. Time is near, really. 
but only believers that has gone through water baptism will not die. The thief that say he believed, he, will, he, he went up to heaven, but he has to die. He cannot come down and do his water baptism and he cannot die. But you also must have the revelation. No, the, the disciple that turned away, amazingly, is in John 6, 66, 666, Antichrist. So, we, we feel that the uh, end time is coming, rumors that the uh, end time is coming. We see wars, uh, we see famine, you know. So, everyone believes rapture is coming. So, if rapture is coming, there's no immortals, no people living more than 120 years, then I'm talking nonsense, the Bible is also not true. You must see immortals walking the streets. And how many of them? Is it 1%, 2%, 10%, or 50%? 50% of Christians. Matthew 24, 26. Uh, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. Israel is at war with Syria. U.S. is tension, heightened tension, being bombarded in the Mediterranean. Sudan is bombing, Ethiopia is bombing. Matthew 24, 7. Famine and pestilence and earthquakes in, in diverse places. These are just beginning of sorrows. If rapture happened in the next 10 to 30 years, I want rapture to happen. We should pray for rapture to happen. We won't see many immortals between 120 years to 150. How many of you all is uh, 100 years old? If you are 100 years old, if it happens 30 years old, you are only 130. How many of you are 70 years old? If 30 years old, or 70 years old, if rapture happened within 30, you are only 100. It doesn't prove that immortals are around. Because the Bible says in Genesis 6 3, men are flesh. My spirit will not strive with them, for they will live 120 years. So, rapture will not happen when a nation is at war. Israel is at war. Okay? It will only come as described by Jesus in Luke 17 27. They ate, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. 1 Thessalonians 5 2. For yourself know accurately that day of the Lord comes like a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Israel must be enjoying peace before destruction can come. But I want to take note, eh? take note. Matthew 24, 50, the two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two shall be grinding the mill. The one shall be taken and one left. Out of two, one is taken. It's like 50% successful rate now. Quite good, isn't it? 50%. Luke 17, 34. I tell you in the night there shall be two in bed, in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Again, 50%, consistent. 50% successful rate. Matthew 25, 11. After the, the other five virgins came along saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not, I do not know you. This is the parable of ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish. Again, 50-50. So I, I believe the time will come when rapture will happen, but only 50% will rapture up. 50 will be left behind. So it's a, it's a very big target, no? Because now, how many of y'all believe that you can be immortal, you take the Holy Communion? How many are there to raise up your hand? I cry. It's, it's a very big number. Manifestation, manifestation of uh, immortal. 50% 50, 50 must be immortal. In this church, zero. So, a very big target. Romans 6.23 says that for wage of sin is death. If you die, if you die or you have the thought of dying, you are taking the wage of sin. God is coming for his bride. His bride must be 
blameless. Why? His bride cannot die. His bride must have the gift of life. Life. Life has no mixture of death. And in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 29, otherwise what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? You have to baptize, but you are baptizing on behalf of the dead. I will explain. Just, just keep that in mind, yeah, in mind. So the manifestation of immortal is that you can live more than 120 years. Or you kernel poison, you still live. Plane crash, you stand up and walk. People stone you, you still stand up and walk. Paul was stoned, left to die. I believe he died, but he stood up and walked. He was bit by a dang, dang, uh, poisonous snake. He stood up and walked. John, boy in a pot of uh, oil, cannot die. He was banished to Patmos Island. So alive and remain in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, there is a difference. Being alive and being alive and remain. There's two different. If you look look, look at Noah, only eight pe eight people went inside. Eight people is only safe. Sodom and Gomorrah, four minus one. The wife turned into salt. Lot and two daughters came out. Promised land. There none went into the promised land. And all died except for the two spies, Joshua and Caleb. The rest all died. Very sad. No one went to the promised land. They were given a chance to enter. Then they have to go into the wilderness. They died, dropped dead. All the fighting generation died within 38 years on the 40 years. Only two, they shortened two years, maybe to reward Caleb and Joshua. David and Goliath is a replica of the 40 years in the wilderness. The Goliath is a giant cursing, cursing, cursing for 40 days. Send your best man, fight with me. They were cursing and cursing and cursing. They, they live in a tent in fear. 40 days. The Jews went in the wilderness 40 years. Only David stepped up and took the Goliath's head. God is looking for David's faith in you to believe that you can overcome death. Goliath, Goliath is six cubic height, has six pieces of armor, and his spear weighs 600 shekels. He's a symbol of the 666. God is looking towards you to have the faith of David to deal with death. It's simple. Just take the Holy Communion, discern it. That is the tree of life. Now I will share with you, uh, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep. So if you are alive, you will be here, earth. You are not in hell or you are not in heaven. You cannot be alive and you are in hell or in heaven. Your feet is firmly on the ground. But in Thessalonians 1, 4, 17, then who, we who are alive and remain, it's a bit oxymoron. If you're alive, you must be remain. We'll be caught up in the clouds together with them and meet the Lord. So you must be breaking bread till he come. You must take the Holy Communion and discern it is the fruit of the tree, from tree of life. So, if you, you die 120 and below, it's quite normal. Because Bible, Genesis 6, 6 uh, 3, already clarified that you live under 120. The mystery that not all will sleep is the mystery that not all will die. It's not a mathematical occurrence or probability. No, now our population is 7.6 7 billion. When rapture happens here, those who are alive get rapture. If it happens here, those who are alive get rapture here. If it rapture here, those who are alive get rapture here. There's no mystery in that. There's totally no mystery in mathematical statistical projection. It basically says, believe me, not all will die. 
50% of the believers not, not die if they see the revelation. Okay? Genesis 6 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men. Jesus, the Holy Spirit is striving to be with you. When you sin, he walk away. He's not with you. Not all the time. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. But this is Genesis 6 3. When you look at Genesis, Genesis, sorry, Genesis uh, 6, 25, 7, Genesis 35, 28, Genesis 47, 28, Job 42, 16. You see a lot of people, they are not part of the eight people that went inside the Noah, live more than 120 years old. So it's either Genesis 6, 3 is wrong or we read it incorrectly. We think that man cannot live more than 120. Yes, you can if the spirit is with you. Just like Abraham, 175 years old. Isaac, 180. Job, 140 40 years old. Jacob, 147. So it doesn't nullify Genesis 6-3 that you can only live 120. The, the key is the Holy Spirit is with you. And guess what? In John 14, 16, I will give you a spirit that will abide with you forever. So you have no excuse to die. The Holy Spirit is with you forever. It's not striving to be with you. It will never leave you or forsake you. Hebrew 11, 13, 5. He will never leave you or forsake you. So in the Old Testament, Old Testament 6, 3, you, there's a cap of 120. In the New Testament, I will never leave you nor forsake you. John 14, 16, I will abide with you forever. That's why his name, that's why his name, Matthew 1, Matthew 1, 23, 1, 2, 3, they shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. If he's with you, you have no excuse to die. You don't see in the gospel, people die in the presence of Jesus. Wherever Jesus goes, no one dies in his presence. If he is inside you, there's no reason why you will die. If you take the Holy Communion, the tree of life, discern it correctly, you should not die. But now we see a lot of people die at uh, 70, 80 years old. I go to wake, I get very angry. My classmate passed away. Pastors on the, on the pulpit will say, His people will, will all have to die, have to die once. But we already die in a holy, holy baptism. Holy bat baptism is not symbolic. There is a purpose to feel, feel, fulfill the appointed time to die once. And people die 70, 80. It's not what the Bible say. Psalm 90, 10 the days of the years are 70, and if by reason of strength they be 80. This is Moses crying out to the Lord. Show your mercy to the people. Show your glory to the people. He's, he's complaining to God. The people are dying one by one, dropping dead in the wilderness. These are the people who never believed to take on the promised land. Saw the giant scat, saw the giant 666, or like Goliath, dead in their mind. So we are used to be like them. We still fear that. We know that that is coming, but we're not dealing with it. So God is calling, trying to ignite your David faith to come up. Take Goliath, take that. He needs 50% so that he can claim for the bride. He needs you all to be baptized, more people to be baptized to believe that you will not die. You enter his kingdom and take his fruit of tree. He needs that number. If he's going to come for 10 people, 1 people, Jesus defeated that cross. His finished work is totally waste. His bride is, his bride is only a handful. Why must he sacrifice his son when the church is not ready to take on the Goliath, when his church is not ready to take on the dead? When he complained, Moses complained in 9.10, Psalm 9.10, 
God answered him swiftly. The following chapter. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. <coughs> Let's say if you come, come to my house, I will serve you coffee. Okay? I can serve you one glass, two glass, three glass, ten glass. But the satisfaction is determined by you. How many cup of coffee do you want? One? Two? I, I, I will satisfy you. I will be happy to make cups and cups of coffee. But I cannot determine the number of cups that you will be satisfied. So God is giving you, I will satisfy you with long life. I will show you my Yeshua, salvation, victory over hell. So he's a server, you determine. He wants you to live so that you be the blameless bride, ready for him to come and take. Last time the tree of life was taken away, the, was taken away from Adam and Eve by kicking them out. Now the tree of life is that he comes to you, he comes to you and presents it to you. He invites you to take it. Okay? Water baptism is described in Romans 6.3. Don't you know that all of us were baptized into Jesus? Were baptized into his death. You die once. This is an appointed time to die. Romans 6 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. You already died in the water baptism. Water baptism is not symbolic. It's not insignificant. It's very important. You must do your water baptism. Romans 6, 9, Knowing that Christ has been raised from the, from the dead, die no more. Death had no more dominion over him. So likewise, death has no more dominion over you. So in summary, the tree of life is the holy communion. It's intentionally hidden. Even Jesus, when he was describing to his disciples, to the learned Pharisees, they didn't see it. But now is the time, before the seven angels sound, before, not sounded yet, the last mystery will be unraveled. It's now unraveled. You have the mystery. It's told to you, you have responsibility. You need to be the bride. Everyone take Holy Communion. In 1 Corinthians 11.20 to 11.34, I've been reading, 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 I don't understand. But only of late I can see. No, 1.20 to 1.22, it describes how unworthily people used to take the Holy Communion. They were drunk, they were hungry, they come and eat. The rich are all full. They will be cursing and passing judgment on the poor. So in the church, there will be a lot of judgment and a lot of eating and getting drunk. They were eating unworthily. That's why you see 11.20 to 11.22, it talks about eating unworthily. And the formula to rectify the unworthy is 11.33 to 11.34. If anyone is hungry, let them eat at home. It will not be for judgment. The rich should not judge the poor. So that will fix how to eat it worthily. But we miss, we miss 11, well, we miss 11.29. For he that eat and drink unworthily, eat and drink damnation to himself. When, when you get drunk or you just pass judgment, you will miss the point, miss what is in front of you. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. So we have three doors, worthy, unworthy. We've been bouncing around this worthy, unworthy. But we have now discerned correctly that the Holy Communion is a tree of life. All of us seen, all of us seen that people take Holy Communion, they all die. Now it's time to discern it and not die. Let's graduate away from worthy, unworthy. We are all unworthy person that needs to 
take the Holy Communion, but we take it worthily. But now, to reap the benefit is to discern it. Discern it is the tree of life. I got two more parts. I, th I think can digest not. <laughs> Of all the most important things, that tree of life is the fruit of tree, the Holy Communion. I'm giving you the examples of why, why was it not revealed earlier? Why are people still dying? Because the time is not right. Even Jesus, when he stand in front of his disciple, they didn't get it. The time wasn't right. Now the time is right. Now you have the knowledge. Now you have the responsibility to find 50 believers. One in every two, one, five out of five, virgin. Virgin, a uh, prize title. They love God. All the ten virgins love God. They know about God. They know about Jesus coming. But the other five is just foolish and one five is wise. Foolish in the sense that they might feel that it's very hard to accept Holy Communion is a tree of life. Foolish is a, to accept that Jesus is in you never leave you or forsake you. You have no reason to live only 70, 80, or no reason to live 120. Foolish, because the word is the same, the Bible is the same, the, there's no new doctrine. Foolish in the sense that you still want to be John 666, these disciples that walk away. Hebrew 11 is very, very uh, important. Hebrew 11 talks about Hall of Fame, all the famous famous patriarch, Abraham, Abel, Enoch, no? uh, Noah, Jacob, Moses, but you don't find Elijah there. Elijah didn't die. Elijah was taken. Enoch didn't die, but he was translated. He walked with God. And he was translated. Oh, but he 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 didn't experience that. He went to heaven. Okay. All died. Uh, when you die, you only have spirit and soul in heaven. You don't have a body. Okay? Only earth, you have body, spirit, and soul. But notice 11.39. Hebrew 11.39 says, And this all, having obtained good report through faith, received not the promise. They are all in the hall of fame, but they did not receive the promise. What promise? 11.40. God having provided some better things for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. All those great Petra are not perfect. They need us to make them perfect. You compare us with them, we have our body, spirit, and soul. They only have spirit and soul, no body. They're looking towards us to rapture. They're looking towards us to give them the body. Because rapture can only happen, the dead will rise up first with a glorified body. They want the glorified body. They're not complete. But they cannot be complete if you all still believe that you all will die. You all still believe that you all would still take the wage of sin and not take the gift of life. If you all don't make up the 50% number, they, they are very depressed. They won't get their body. If you are a bribe, white, unblemished, life, cannot die, then... Jesus can, at his time of choosing, he can come for you. And when he come for you, the patriot will get their body. We read over, oh, how can we make them complete? What is not complete? They don't have a body. They're looking for the glorified body. And what's stopping that? We are stopping that. Before the seven angels sound, not sounded, before it sound, The last mystery will be unraveled. Now you have the last mystery. So the date will rise up first with the glorified body. That's what they want. Then followed by us. Us that are alive and remain. We must be more than 120. So in time will not come so fast. Israel is still at war. There's no peace. They're not merry, dancing, celebrating, feel peace. There's no walls. So 
it still can't happen. Rapture still can't happen if we are not ready. I, I come back to 11, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? Being baptized on behalf of the dead. Baptism is only in the New Testament when John proclaimed that God, Jesus is coming. Baptism is only now. Prior to that, they don't get baptized. They don't baptism. So when we baptize, we are actually baptizing on behalf of the dead. I don't know what's the number there. God says the time will not be no, waiting for us to baptize with the revelation that when we baptize, we die no more. And you have that thinking, you take the Holy Communion, that number count. So there is a purpose of all these Bible verses. There is a great significance in water baptism. It's not symbolic. It's never symbolic. <coughs> just, just to sum up, uh, Adam and Eve was kicked out. The will was torn. God came out. God came out. So there is a contrast. Immortality is found in uh, Genesis 3.22. You know the animals, the birds, the creatures that creep, they don't take tree of life. They all die. So there's death in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve know about death by seeing the animal. They die. That's why God said, if you take from the tree of knowledge, you will die. If Adam and Eve cannot see that on the animal, they will say, uh, what's that? Uh? If no one dies, or if no animal dies. But you read the Bible, the animals that creep, the birds that fly, the animals that graze the land, they don't take from the tree of life. They take below. So when they sin, the kill switch, the kill switch is to deprive them of the tree of life. Shoo them away. Put the swelling sword, put the cherubim. That's the kill switch. We all die because we are deprived of eating from the tree of life. It's not our sin. You can keep all the laws, you still die. Thanks to Adam and Eve, kicked out, the whole generation of humanity has no access to tree of life. Tree of life came back when Jesus came in his body and in his blood. So, that's why in Romans 5, 12, one man's sin entered into the world, they passed upon all men. One man's sin, not your sin, no? One man's sin, three of life taken away. Three of life taken away, all will die. 5, 17. One man offends, dead reign one. This one man is Adam, Adam's offense that caused the tree of life to be taken away. It's not your sin. You can keep all the laws, you still die. The only way you can stay alive is to take from the tree of life. This is the tree of life. And he keeps on telling you, eat this bread until he comes. Not eat this bread until you drop dead. No. So the devil will come into play. The devil knows the Bible scriptures. The devil will confuse you. The first body version is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The first body. Oh, they are sustainable immortality. They have to take the tree of life to sustain their immortality. If they don't take the tree of life, like the animal, they cannot eat from the tree of life. They only graze the ground. They will die. The second one, they've been shoo away. This body cannot sustain. This body die. They are outside the Garden of Eden. The third body, which we are now, Version 3 is also sustainable body. We cannot die if we take the Holy Communion. We cannot die if we take it discerning that this is the tree of life. It's the same. But this is not a glorified body when you go to heaven. This, this you will still feel tired. When Jesus was walking on the sea, he went to the boat. He was so tired, he slept. When the storm came, he still slept. He's hungry, he eat. And this is the body that we have. Sustainable immortality. We have to take the tree of life. Every day if possible. Gather your family together. Break bread. 
Only when the version fall, when rapture happen, you get a glorified body. So the devil will play tricks with you. You mix Bible verses that you cannot get immortality until you die, when you go to heaven with a glorified body. You, you see how you play with, if you die, that means you are not immortal. Immortality means no death. If you die, you have to die to achieve immortality, to achieve eternal life. I've seen a lot. Pastors will say that in, when my classmate died also, they, they will share, I feel so angry. That is demonic teaching. To die, to go to heaven, to have eternal life. You need to die, you need to die. But he came to give life. It's very demonic to say you need to die to gain immortality. That's not Bible teaching. So in Corinthians 11, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 57, I just read quickly. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, heaven, your flesh and blood cannot. You have to have the glorified body. I show you a mystery. I just read the red part. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall be changed at the twinkling of the eye. Okay, this is about rapture. When you rapture, you have a changed body. But you notice 50 to 51, it, takes, it talks about change. A twinkling life does change. 53 to 57, it talks about putting on, putting on, putting on. It's two different things. Intentionally confusing, yes, because the timing is not right. You wear clothes. You do not want to be unclothed because you'll be naked. Think of your clothes as your flesh. You groan in your flesh. Sometimes you wear tight shirt, you, you feel very uncomfortable. Same thing with your flesh. You still groan, but you will not unclothed because you will be naked. You put on, you put on. So when you see corruptible must put on incorruptible. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. He didn't say put on. We shall be changed. He didn't say put on. But 53 say put on immortality. You have to clothe the Holy Spirit. 54, so, so when the corruption shall be put on in corruption and the mortal shall have put on immortality, if you put on, then shall be brought to pass. Put on is version 3. Transform is version 4. So it combine these two, it looks very confusing. But you read over and over, you will see the truth. So put on, it's like dressing up. That mortality might be swallowed up. But you still grown, no? Okay. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. People will confuse you, will say that you are not immortal. But look at Jesus' body. His body was badly mutilated. S scratched. Beaten up. Bleed out. Deformed. Holes in his body. You cannot recognize him when he was put at the cross. He was bad, dead for three days. But what revived him to a perfect body and resurrect is in Romans 8.11. Romans 8.11 says that, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, is the spirit inside you? Raise up your hand if your spirit is inside you. Yeah, he is inside you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. He didn't say quicken your spirit, quicken your soul. No, those, those need not be regenerated. Our body age, our body widow, wrinkle. That is what he's repairing. And this Holy Spirit is like a plastic surgeon. He has experience. He did it on Jesus. Badly beaten up, this figure, bleed out, died, dead. You can bring it back to life into a perfect body. And that is the spirit inside you. I'm coming to the end today. Washing the feet. When Jesus is about to be caught and crucified, no, he, he, he did something very 
uh, unique. You go and wash disciples' feet. John said, wash the whole body of me. He said, no, only your feet. If you do not let me wash your feet, you will have no part of me. But we have water baptism, we have our salvation. Believe you have salva salvation. You do water baptism, you have immortality. But why? Why are the feet so important? Before someone dies, they will leave a will. The will is very important. He will leave something very important to tell you. He wash your feet. But we interpret it that, oh, we must be humble, we must do work. We must do work. He must reign till he put all the enemy under his feet. Feet is very important. Feet under his feet. This is the last revelation at the end. Before Jesus is crucified, the last thing that he did, he washed his disciples' feet. So feet is very important. When you look at Romans 6.20, and the God of peace shall bruise the Satan under your feet. Shortly, the grace of your Lord Jesus Christ be with you. He washed his disciples' feet. The last enemy needs to be put under his feet. But he tells you in Romans 16, 20 that it's your feet that is going to crush the serpent head. Crush that. Because you and him is one. If you don't let me wash your feet, you will have no part of me. Peter said, wash all my body. No, you should not wash my feet. Peter told Jesus, you don't, you have no part in me. So your feet is his feet, his feet is your feet, and your feet and his feet is become one church. The bride. The bride that needs to crush. What's the symbol of washing feet? Humility serve. People think that wash feet must serve. Yes, serve. But how? You read Genesis 49, 11, Binding his foal to the wine and his donkey called to the choice wine. He washed his garment in wine and his vesture in the blood of grapes. He washed clothes with wine. That means you must have overabundant wine. Your vineyard, your vineyard is so huge that you're willing to tie a donkey next to the vineyard. The donkey will happily eat the vineyard. But you have abundance. Washing feet signifies abundance. If you have life, immortal life, I don't know how, when it is a rapture, I hope it comes fast, but it cannot come fast if you are not willing to be the bride, you are not willing to form part of the 50%, then you have abundance of time to witness to people, sharing gospel to people. You'll be very happy doing the job of sharing. You will never get tired of sharing. The only thing is that when you share, you get old, you get frail, you be disheartened. You will think that, that maybe it's time for me to go. God take me. That's not true. He asks you to break bread till he comes. He didn't say break bread till you die. Washing feet to signify the hidden message is abundance. You have a lot of time to serve him. The only reason you stay alive is to witness to people that, that Jesus finished work is life, not death. And God is not a cruel God. God won't give, give you a life and do His will and you'll feel pain, agony. No. In Matthew 20, 28, even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. He gave His life a ransom for many. No one pay ransom and collect a dead body. He gave his life so that you can live. He will not recover a dead body. He paid heavily. Hebrew uh, Hosea 13.14 in relation to, to Revelation 10.7. 10, 7. It is foretold to the prophet and servant, the last mystery. Hosea is one of the prophets. 13, 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem from them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy plague. O oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. So he paid. He already pronounced that Jesus is going to pay the ransom so that you will not die. And he's not a cruel God that you will be all frail trying to serve him in pain. In Job 33, 24, out of a sudden, Job will say, then he is gracious unto him and said, 
deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. You and me have to journey back to young, youth. How young? Jesus died at the age of 33. He gave you righteousness. He took your sin. He gave you health. He took your sickness. He gave you old wrinkled body. No, he gave you his 33-year-old young body and took your old chases back. You and me have to break bread and raise back to be 33. Is there such thing? No? Is, can, can God do such thing? No? We have Sarah, for example. Sarah is an old lady at 90. She giggled. She laughed. <coughs> when the three visitors came to tell Ab Abraham, next year your wife will have a child. Sarah laughed. I'm old. I'm worn off. She's describing she's really, really old. She's 90 years old. By the way, my, my husband, Abraham, is also old. Old man. He's 100 years old. He's, she's 90. She's truly describing an old lady, 90 years old. But at 90, 90 years old, when they left, King Abimelech saw her and wanted her as her harem. Take her. Would a king that can have all the beautiful girls, virgin, take Sarah old and dry? Something must have changed within a year. She becomes so beautiful that King Abimelech possessed her. And Abraham was so coward. Don't dare to say, don't have truth. She's not my, my wife, she's my sister. And in the Bible it says, why, why? King Abimelech, why do you tell me a lie? Abraham explained, I fear this land, no one fear God. And you will kill me for an old hag. No, you will kill me for my beautiful wife. No one will kill for an old lady. At the age of 91, she bore Isaac. But 90 and 91, before bearing child, God restored Sarah and restored Abraham to youth so that they won't have a painful sex to have I Isaac. So God is very beautiful. The only thing changed is name. Sarai Bossi, Sarah Beautiful. Everyone call her Sarah, Sarah Beautiful Princess, Beautiful Princess. That transformed her flesh. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning there's a word. The word is with God. John 1.14, the word is God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. When you call out Sarah, 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 where's my breakfast, Sarah? Thank you, Sarah, take the trash. Sarah flesh transformed into a beautiful princess. So much so, she's no longer dry and worn off. But the king Abimelech wanted her, took her away. Amazing, isn't it? So in conclusion, I, I wrap up my host. <laughs> in conclusion, <laughs> before, I, are you all willing to, to be the bride? If you are, raise up your hand. You, are you all looking towards rapture? So, so you, must, you must take the Holy Communion. You must take and discern it correctly. And Book of Thomas, Gospel of Thomas is very beautiful. And he said, whoever discovered the interpretation, interpretation of this saying will not taste that. Thomas wrote it. He will not taste that. Book of Thomas is not part of the 66. You know also, it's Book of Enoch also not. Jesus said, those who seek should not stop seeking until they find. So don't stop. Challenge, challenge. I'm going to leave these slides with your church. Go back and read. Tear it apart. Challenge it. Continue to seek it. If you have any more questions, you, you can send it to uh, CS Gan or Jimmy. I, I will, you can have my number. I will reply. Anything that disturbs you, that, feel, that makes you feel that immortality is not real, send it to me. I will address it. If you need me to see you, I'd be glad to come, come down to see you. If you need me to sh share with your family members, I'd be glad to come to share with you. So verse 2 of Thomas says that those who seek should not stop seeking until they find. When they find, they will be disturbed. It disturbed me greatly. It really, really disturbed me. When they are disturbed, they will marvel and rule over the world. So it's very beautiful. The gospel is truth. The tree of life is true. The fruit 
if you see a fruit, there must be a tree. Don't stop looking for the tree. And last, I, I leave you the parable of uh, talent. I just leave, I, I believe you all heard about the parable of talent. One multiply for five, ten, more is given. One multiply five, more is given. One buried it, one buried it. So God cast the wordless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there was weeping and garnishing of teeth. You know, those people who never went to the promised land, God was so angry. And God said, I will do the same. If you do not believe, I will be angry at you. You will not enter my rest. It's in Hebrew. So the same thing. He wants you to have David's faith to take down that. Deal with that. Be marvel with his word. Be disturbed and overcome it. Don't, don't be satisfied. Overcome it. You have the talent. Don't bury it. Share it with your mom, your dad, your sister, with everyone. The more you share, the more you learn. The more you believe. That can sum up my whole sermon. I hope you'll, you will take Holy Communion till it comes every day. Every day. And today with uh, the approval of uh, Pastor Kwan, we will do the Holy Communion. Pastor Kwan will lead the Holy Communion. Brother and sister, let's uh, uh, stand up. Let's sing this song. Let's uh, partake the Holy Communion. Let's... Uh,